the newest weight loss drugs are all the rage. For several years, they have collectively been one of the biggest talking points in medicine. You've likely heard of the major brand names, Ozempic, Wegovy, and others, which make up the class of drugs known as GLP-1 receptor agonists. Although designed to manage diabetes, these drugs also have appetite suppressing effects, making them a popular choice for weight loss. The frenzied interest in these drugs has been written about countless times, often with a focus on the drug's potential economic effects. The growth in the market, the potential of a healthier workforce, the huge profit margins for the drug producers, and more. Novo Nordisk, the leading manufacturer, is propping up much of the Danish economy, with reports suggesting nearly half of all private sector non-farm jobs created in Denmark can be traced back to Novo. Reductionist quick fixes for BC have been tried before, and they've failed before. What's different this time? Are they cheaper? No, out-of-pocket costs in the US exceed $1,000 per month. Are they effective in the long term? No, weight loss plateaus after about a year, and to prevent that weight from returning, the drugs must be continued indefinitely. Do they have fewer side effects? Let's see. Nausea, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, vomiting, pancreatitis, vision changes, hypoglycemia, dehydration, kidney problems, stomach problems, serious allergic reactions, and gallbladder problems. And that's not even to mention the controversy, as it was described by a researcher whose work and finances depend directly on a dozen or so pharmaceutical corporations, including Novo Nordisk. That is, the controversy of whether GLP-1-based therapy can increase the risk for specific malignant disease like pancreatic carcinoma and thyroid cancer. We'll ask again, what's different this time? Maybe when it comes to health, we should be looking for long, sustainable paths, not shortcuts.